Right, on to the uh, last two final modules, um, or at least for the moment until I get any more inspiration. So uh, starting off with the step sequencer, uh, fairly complicated looking beast, but effectively this is a eight step uh, sequencer. So we've got eight steps there um, and effectively there's a small IC behind the scenes, which is a 4017 decade counter. And um, to sort of to explain what's kind of going on, uh, there's this, as, as the name implies, is a sequencer. So it fires eight notes in sequence and then repeats back round again. Uh, each time a note fires, uh, we can control the pitch with these variable resistors there. And um, effectively the output uh, either goes to a note CV output, so a voltage of zero to 10 volts, uh, and indeed a gate output as well. <clears throat> so, so typically what we would do is we'd send the note CV out to the input of the voltage control oscillator and would send the gate output to the envelope generator so that as every every time it steps through uh, the envelope is open and closed and that way we get the the sound uh, being shaped um, it also supports uh, a reset and uh, clock in as well so this uh, in terms of how this sequencer kind of keeps time uh, it works in two ways there's a uh, a, a control knob on the front which effectively manages the uh, charge discharge time of a 555 timer um, so that's sort of you know normal operation as it were um, but if you insert a, a jack into the internal uh, into the external clock then it will quite happily receive a clock signal from a, a drum machine or a sequencer so it's quite quite useful to be, you know to be used in two two, two particular ways um, so quite busy in the front end um, it's, uh, I haven't managed to label all of it because I've run out of space. Um, but turning around to the back of it, it's uh, fairly simple in terms of the circuit. I mean, there's, there's, there's essentially two ICs being used. The, <clears throat> the decade count of the um, 4017 uh, chip uh, is effectively counting from 1 to 10 uh, each time the clock signal uh, pulses. And, and in this case, what we're doing is rather than counting to 10, we're counting to 8 then we're cycling back round again. Um, the control of the uh, the clock signal is managed by a fairly standard um, a stable um, circuit, which is the base panel of a 555 timer, um, and that sort of yeah that just puts out a pulse every so often, which then moves it increments the the the, the decade counter forward. Um, so it's particularly uninteresting. It's probably the most garbage circuit I've built for a while because I had to use glue to stick bits in it um, but yeah it, it sort of it proved the purpose in some respects so I shall uh, we'll put that in the rack in a second and show you what that looks like so this is the uh, the quantizer module which um, in hindsight I probably should have built into the uh, into the step sequencer because it doesn't really get used without it but then I kind of run out of space um, so the job of this is effectively to convert a continuously linear signal into a series of discrete steps so um, as I said with the with the step sequencer it's basically the the, the um, note vol uh, CV output is a continuously variable voltage between 0 and 5 volts and therefore if you wanted to tune a particular note to a particular key um, then it's quite difficult to do so you'd need, you'd need to effectively do it by ear as opposed to logically turning the knob, you know, one or two steps to increment from, you know, one to, to 12. And this is essentially what the quantizer does. So it takes a continuously variable input voltage and it outputs a discrete voltage, which is which aligns to the one volt per octave standard. So it's effectively putting out uh, one twelfth of a volt per interval per octave. So for each 12 notes within the octave, it's putting out a twelfth of a volt um, and then, uh, you know, set, typically setting this output to the uh, to the to the um, uh, the note CV input on the oscillator. Um, so it doesn't really do anything particularly interesting other than that. Really, it's it's sort of voltage shaping. Um, in terms of the the actual the, the business end, um, it is purely based around a eighty tiny eighty five um, microcontroller, and that is essentially talking to a. MCP uh, 5921 um, 
a digital to analog converter and then finally the output's going through an op amp um, so because this uh, ic only works at logic level and the potential input voltage is zero to ten volts um, it would wreck that chip so effectively what we're doing is we're taking the input voltage we are dividing by two so that it's zero to five volts we're then doing the logic at that level uh, the output of the dac uh, is is then zero to five volts and then we scale that back up to zero to ten with the op amp at the end um, the the main sort of conversions and clever bits and calculations are effectively done within the microcontroller so this is purely a uh, a software based uh, module it's quite useful because it means i can just wrench the chip out and, um, and reflash it as and when i want to um, i think longer term the idea would probably be to rebuild that and the sequencer into something a bit more grand where you could use it for things like arpeggiators and uh, and, and such like but this is very much a, a means to an end at the moment um, the tuning knob on the front just al effectively allows us to uh, to scale up and scale down the voltage so effectively in terms of actual um, notes that it works with it's converting the input into a uh, into a basically a, a 1 to 12 uh, note value um, so so basically C to C um, and it's then sending that same output it's sending that output um, basically 0 to, to, to 12 the tune effectively allows us to scale up an octave or scale down an octave so it allows a small amount of transposition um, you know it, it's not perfect in my mind I think I could probably build something a lot better but it certainly does the point or serves the purpose at the moment which effectively means that I can use the step sequencer to uh, play steps in key with other instruments which are, are sort of tuned to the usual chromatic scale rather than anything that's sort of drifts around and that's it really um, that's its kind of core function it's you know uh, a 4 HP uh, module width in comparison to the 8 which is what the uh, step sequencer is um, this is <laughs> Lupuloid uh, beer faced that's uh, gamma ray uh, for the beer drinkers out there and uh, yeah we'll, we'll stick them both in the, to the rack now and sort of just show what they look like actually when they're being used we've patched the uh, step sequencer and the quantizer into the rack now and uh, at the moment the, uh, the sequencer is just running itself it just does that um, I haven't added a stop and start button uh, but nothing is audible at the moment because I haven't patched it in so if we take the input of the quantizer and put that into the uh, note output on the uh, step sequencer and then if we take the gate out and feed that into the envelope generator you should start to hear the sequence now running in order so not particularly spectacularly tuneful but it's doing what it's doing um, if we adjust the tune we can hear it move up pitch by basically one cent and if we change any of these particular knobs here then you can control the actual pitch of the sequence and then as you can see on the left hand side these are a bunch of empty triggers if we take these out you should hear the notes slightly differently and what these are these gates on the left hand side are doing is just simply a, a, a 5 volt uh, gate output so this is quite nice um, to use it as uh, as an accent so we've got two of these patched into the mixer here and those blended signals from the mixer are going into the uh, into the BCF input. So the BCF is basically a blended signal from the two accents and the uh, envelope generator output. So what this allows us to do is to, for example, accent the first note, maybe accent the second note, or perhaps the third, fourth, or whatever. So it just adds a little bit of rhythmic uh, texture to it. And that is largely it, really. Um, I mean, you can twiddle the knobs to your heart's content to do anything nice with the actual sound, but we've 
we've obviously gone through that before, so I won't bother too much with that. Um, what I will demonstrate though is the um, the ability to clock the step signature and from a, an external source. So what I'm actually going to do is take the clock output from a drum machine and patch that into there which will go quiet for the moment because there's no clock signal coming through and I'll just patch the the reset so that we get a an eight beat uh, repetition going round. so if I fire up the drum machine now you'll hear that the drum machine is then playing in sequence uh, in step time with the actual sequencer so the sequencer itself is being clocked or, or controlled by the uh, the drum machine It's quite good just for messing around with and doing all manner of uh, fun stuff. Um, you know, again, like all the other modules, you can kind of string it together how you see fit, really. Um, if you wanted to, you could drive the um, the step sequencer from the MIDI, um, the, 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 the MIDI interface. So you provide a clock signal uh, over MIDI into this, and then you can just use the uh, clock output and the reset to go into here. So again, pretty infinite control as to what you can string things together. And that's about it really. So that's the the sum total of all of the modules. Um, I'm sure we'll build some further ones over time when I get the time and the effort and the inclination. Um, but there's certainly enough there to sort of prove the, the point in my mind uh, of how to do things. Uh, and, and then I guess any other modules you, you add in are just simply a, a, an extension of that really. So you can add in more oscillators, more filters, you can add in additional envelopes, you can trigger you know, different sources from different things. You can, I mean, it's just, it's absolute madness what you can do. Um, and that's where the fun lies. So with that, I shall uh, hand off until next time. I might try and uh, pull together a bit of a jam session and sort of show how it works with some of the other kit that I've got just to give a demo of that. So uh, until next time, cheers. <laughs>